Well, hey there, and welcome to another one of my Cheesy YouTube videos. Today's video, we're going to be doing part two of the Polaris Ranger Steering Shaft Saga. But I'm going a little bit further. We're going to go ahead and we're going to tear out the rack and pinion because I don't like it. I just, it just sounds dry. As much as I didn't want to, we're going to go ahead and tear that out and go through that also. So come on and watch the video. After I got it apart, I figured I'd better come give this steering a jiggle. And mainly I just want to make certain that that stub on that rack and pinion was moving with, with the um, wheels. So I gave it a move it around. It does, but it's, I don't like the sound of it. it. Sounds dry. And I don't think I necessarily see slop in it. The only slop I feel is in the lower control arm. So if I'm this far into it, do I go ahead and pull the rack and pinion out and try to disassemble it and grease it? Or since it doesn't really have any play, do I just move on? Well, I think I need to pull that rack and pinion out. Everything I read on the internet about these things is I really didn't do a good job on the rack and pinions as far as lubricating them from the factory and they have a habit of going dry and going bad. So I guess I'll take her apart. Tie rod ends a 15 millimeter wrench on top and a 17 on the bottom. You gotta pull the Potter key out. The good thing it's not a tapered fit, so it should come right apart. Nut in a washer. And another washer. There's no slop, but it sounds dry. I'm not looking forward to getting to them bolts, so. Okay, these bolts are really hard to get out, especially this one down in here because it's back behind this frame member and on the other side this plastic this is a plastic wall right here i got a screwdriver basically basically a screwdriver handle jammed in to give me some clearance the nut is on the back side it's not flush with the back side it's recessed in so i'm using a 3 8 drive breaker bar it's got a half inch socket on it but it should be a 13 and I'm dropping it back behind the wall, working to get it on the nut. Then I found pulling the screwdriver out and letting the wall hold this in place was the best best way to do it. It sucks, but it can be done. Even for a fat guy who doesn't get into tight places as easy. I got a pair of vice grips on the last two lower ones on the main unit. I took the upper bolt out already, but I shoved it back in its hole to keep the vice grips from turning. I'm using, I'm gonna use a ratchet and extension from inside. It's out. Three bolts holding the main body, then two other bolts holding this bracket assembly. The bottom two right here, put a vice grip on them from outside the cab and work a, an extension and I used um, impact from inside the cab on the upper one and these these other two 3 8 breaker bar with a 13 millimeter socket let the plastic wall wedge it into place then a ratchet or ratcheting boxed in or whatever you got to work it from outside the cab it wasn't no fun but you know that I 
now that I got it figured out, maybe it'll be easier for y'all. I'm going to clean it up and make plans to strip her and see if we can't grease her up or determine whether or not we want to keep it. Okay, I pulled the boots off. There's a bushing inside there that this rod slides back and forth through. This is a ball and socket joint. Same as on this side. I believe this is an adjuster to adjust the pressure of this gear up against the worm gear that should be on this shaft. It's been peened. If you see these little marks, that's where after they assembled it and adjusted it, they took a punch and they peened it, which pressure from the peen is, keeps this from wanting to back out. Now I took a um, uh, saw blade and I scratched across the housing and the piece that screws in, hoping, hoping to create a reference point for putting it back together. This is done the same way. It's also got peen marks. Okay, I backed this out. It was four revolutions. You got a spring. There it is. This is what pushes that shaft against that gear in there. And actually, there's grease on there. Okay, so what have I come up with? I believe the rack and pinion is good. There's no play up here, which makes me realize this, the bearings are still good. This is actually going to be a stopper. It's going to restrict the travel when, when this rod moves that way. There's a lot of play in it, but this plastic piece put in this hole goes over the shaft like so, and that takes the play out. So there's no bearing purposely on this end. There's no, there are no metal filings or anything in the gear assembly. And as much as I've read on the internet that these things were prone to go bad because of inadequate lubrication, it is lubricated. The only thing I don't know is if these top bearings have got sufficient hole in them. And I can't tell if they're seal bearings or what. But I'm going to leave it be. I'm going to put some grease inside of here up on, on this rack and put my boots back on. Now you see the, how critical these boots are because there's nothing stopping dirt from getting inside of here or inside of here and getting inside the mechanism. So if you've got a torn rack and pinion boot, you might want to change them out. I've kept my steering adjustment because I haven't taken the tie rod ends off. The cut of the shaft is good. There's nothing wrong there as far as being stripped. So the new shaft should take care of my problem. So I'm gonna put some grease in it and I'm going to put it back in the machine. I put the adjustment nut cap, whatever, back in. I realign, I realign my scribe, my scribe marks. And I'm gonna paint it. been peened over so it shouldn't want to back out. Back on with the boots.
I'm gonna stuff this rag behind here. See if I can keep it from leaning back. Try to get at least one nut started. And gently fill underneath here. I put a pair of vice grips on the bolt. And now the, the bolt's not trying to slide out. And the nut is started. Okay, both bottom nuts are started. There's still one top one right about here. I'm not going to worry about this top nut yet. Let me get the two small ones on the side drawed in. And once it's tightened up, I already got the bolt through so that I can put the vice grips on it and work on it some more. I still took a screwdriver handle from the other side and forced this wall out. And I was able to wedge a combination wrench on this side under the nut so I could tighten it with the ratchet from the other side. I wiggled and jiggled the electric power steering unit to get it off the platform there. So I was able to drop the new shaft through this hole, through the body, where I had to keep twisting the shaft until it fell through, until it fell through the rack and pinion steering. Put this bolt and nut on. It is a 17 millimeter wrench. Okay, I've driven a screwdriver into the upper yoke to try to get the splines to come on. I've already got the lower end of the yoke bolted to the shaft coming out of the rack and pinion. I'm probably going to loosen up, let that shaft slide upwards to make sure there's enough shaft on this upper spline. Which kind of bothers me. Kind of makes me wonder if that's why that shaft went bad, because it's not on the spine down below far enough. And that's one reason why I made sure it was this time. But now it might not be good enough up top. I'm having a hard time getting this spline onto this spline. Let me show you what I found. I don't know if you can see it or not. And my eyeballs ain't that good. I believe this is the, the position. Right here is one spline that's been flattened out. Probably from the bolt passing through this hole right here. So I'm going to take a file and clean it up. I'm going to make sure that this spline is lined up with this valley. Then maybe I'll go together because this sucker's been kicking my butt. So hopefully I'll get it together. I'm also worried that I've tightened up the bottom of the shaft onto the rack and pinion. I'm about to loosen it to let it slide up onto this set of splines. We'll see how it all turns out. In order for me to get the shaft on to loosen this bottom nut for this bolt that clamps the new shaft to the splines now with the upper shaft bolt fitting in the notch of the spline coming out of the electric gearbox this one has been raised up about three eighths, which I think is the original problem, and it's not a good thing. It means that the splines on here are concentrated on the lower part of that shaft. It's not got a good bite on the shaft. I don't know. I mean, that's a weld mint welded to the frame the the bolt holes the bolt holes for the rack and pinion and the bracket for electric steering box is welded to the frame so I don't see any adjustments there's one good thing to come out of this ordeal remember when I spun this thing earlier and it sounded dry now listen It runs back and forth nice and smooth. 
Okay, I'm trying to align my steering wheel. I'm going to sight down the side of the machine. Looking at the front disc. It looks like it's making a slight right turn. Do the other side to confirm it. Yes, it appears to be doing a slight right turn. My steering wheel is showing a slight right turn. I think that's good. Well, maybe I don't. Still showing a slight right turn. So I took the steering wheel off because it wasn't shown. It wasn't. It was not lined up. Took the nut off. The Fifteen sixteenths in my electric impact. I put. I, usually, I put my knees underneath the steering wheel, sitting on the seat. I'll be sitting in the seat. Put my knees underneath the steering wheel. Put a bunch of upward pressure. I put the nut back on till it's on a good ways and just a little bit off backed off just a little bit and then i i whacked a nut with the hammer while i got my knees underneath it pushing up and that's i didn't really use my knees on this one because it was too tall but i was able to reach my arm around there and pull up and it popped loose pretty good i wanted to make sure there was no master spline because sometimes on steering wheels there's a master spline and that makes it so you can't just adjust the steering wheel to recenter it. You got to adjust the tie rods. And I wanted to get this done now before I put any of the plastic on because I'd hate to take all that back off just because I have to pull the steering shaft out again. But I'm good, so I'm gonna keep putting things back together. Got the this plastic's not gonna be fun, but I think it's next. Well, I think I'm going in that video right there. Just it. The rest of it goes back together the same way it came apart in the first video. Also, I'm actually not going to put the plastic all the way back on quite yet because I'm pondering on whether or not I want to modify that steering shaft, which I don't really want to do, but I think I could make it better. I don't really want to take on any liability as far as if it were to break. The, the problem with the shaft not going on the spines far enough, far enough that's Polaris's problem. If I go modifying the shaft and the weld brakes or something then someone might consider that my problem so i was thinking about making a telescopic shaft but i would also have to think by doing so would i be would it would i ruin a 200 and something dollar shaft because thinking it could be telescopic winds up getting a bind or something so i don't know the answers so i'm just going to ponder that but as far as doing this part of the job we're done and i want to thank you for watching my video and um, please like and subscribe to my channel and tell your friends i want to grow this channel and i'll continue making videos on projects i got around here and remember if you love life and learning new things go